On today's show, one of the coolest products we've ever made. And then... This stuff tastes like crap. Crapola, and people love it. Find out how this brand built a passionate following in America's ultimate outdoor town. People are passionate about outdoor equipment. Get this. Americans spend $30 billion a year on gear. But no one ever really sees how their stuff gets made. That's where we come in. Made for the Outdoors. Made for the Outdoors is presented by Warner's Dock. Whether you're hunting, fishing, or just hanging out in the park, everyone needs a dependable cooler. And today we're at Maluna to see how their cooler is made for the outdoors. The word Maluna is Hawaiian for rising above. Here in Baxter, Minnesota, brothers Connor and Garrett Hagelin are raising the Maluna brand to the top of the industry. My role here at Maluna um, is really just kind of steer the ship. Between myself and my brother, we do a lot of different things here. Garrett and I have always wanted to start an outdoor company. Maluna kind of washed ashore in our coastlines, if you will, and well, we loved everything about it. We like to think that our customers are basically who we are as people. You know, we, we look for high performance, whether it's in the auto world, fishing, hunting. So we want to deliver that to anyone that needs that high performance in the outdoors. As of 2023, there are a lot of cooler brands out there. But what sets Maluna apart is their unique patented design. Yeah, the design was meant and created to outperform the leading competition. Flat out simple. But it's not your typical box, right? Our Maluna coolers are packed with features, uh, from the molded handles to it's uh, truly the, the patented feature behind it that allows us for our superior ice retention, which is uh, what we call the unhinged limited features. It allows for the uh, lid to be kind of free floating on the base itself. The, the seal is the most important piece to a cooler. And with that, our patented feature, it allows for essentially no cool air escaping or no heat getting in, vice versa. With the unhinged design ready, Garrett and I head to the floor. All right, let's talk raw materials here. This is the start of a cooler, basically. It starts in a powder form, comes to us pre-colored and pulverized. So by the time it gets to us, all that we really need to do is dump it into a mold and go. I have a feeling that this could get pretty messy. Uh, it's like, I haven't even touched anything and I think I have some on my hands. It can start to cling to you already. And there's a lot of like quality precautions that we take to make sure that there isn't contamination in the product. It's very light and fluffy. The consistency is really, you know, a lot less dense than a lot of other raw materials out there. So, sure. Yeah. Um, and what color is this? So this is our chill blue. It's uh, it's kind of like a frost blue color that we've taken. It's gone. Really it's great. tropical. It is. It's yeah. beachy. It's great. They weren't kidding. It is very sticky. There we go. Shine up the nails a little bit. Gotta look good for the job. Cleaned up and ready for rotational molding. So this is where the roto molding magic happens. This is where it starts. Yep. So this is where. Uh, the molding and demolding starts to happen. We would crack open a mold here, use the hoist that's above here to lift up half of the mold, because they do get heavy. I mean, it's a solid chunk of aluminum. Right, how heavy so, is a mold? You know, again, they can vary by the size, um, anywhere from, you know, 50 pounds to thousands of pounds. They can really range a lot. Which is crazy, because the products you're making yep. are so light. Yeah, yep, for sure. Also, if we could do every interview in front of a fan from now on, that'd be great. A lot more dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> to make a cooler, it's got to get hot. The oven reaches temps of up to 600 degrees. The molds are loaded with resin, and then the arm rotates into the oven. This is not your easy-bake oven. The big, big oven just 
Don't close the door, please. As the structure rotates, the resin sticks to the mold layer by layer. And while it does that, I'm going to take a break. All right, guys, catch you later. Stay cool. More from Maluna Coolers when we get back. Cheaper than AC. Made for the Outdoors is brought to you by Warner's Dock, Aquarius Home Services, Ice Castle Fish House and RV, Flow Trailers, and by Keystone Light. Keystone Light, always smooth. Celebrate responsibly. Welcome back to Made for the Outdoors. Maluna Coolers is one of the hottest brands on the cooler market. Known for their performance, design, and durability. And when it comes to coolers, durability is more important than you might think. This cooler looks like it's seen some stuff. It's been through some stuff, <laughs> that's for sure. And uh, not just any kind of stuff, but bears. And not just any kind of bear, but grizzly bears. A grizzly bear test is not what I was expecting. So in order to take a lot of uh, coolers and products into national parks, you have to be on this verified list of bear resistance. There's one outfit out in Yellowstone that does it. It has to withstand 60 minutes straight of being mauled by a grizzly bear. Oh, Absolutely, oh, and, and not just any grizzly bear, but they're professional cooler right. killing bears, cooler right? Cooler killing bears, yeah. yes. They, they do that, which is absolutely incredible. It's incredible to see the power. As you can see, a lot of the, the components, like the rubber straps, the feet are gone. Those are the things you would suspect them to kind of rip it off right away almost. But it passed with flying colors. It did. Yes. They couldn't get the lid open. Um, everything on the inside is completely intact. Um, so they tried chewing through the side. Just one reason executing the roto molding process is integral to design. Right now, our mold is finishing up in the oven. Just as uh, the molding process and actually rotating and uh, distributing that material around within, within the mold, it's important for it to move into what we call a pre-cooling phase so that the material slowly starts to cool down and starts to solidify almost like a wax or a gooey wax, if you will. And then from there, moves into a cooling phase where it really starts to cool down a lot faster. Um, it's important to control your shrink rates just as much as it's important to control the flow of the material itself. Once the parts are cooled down from the roto molding process, they come over here where they are injected with foam. And this is a super, super important step because that foam is what insulates your cooler and keeps everything nice and cold. Workers inject foam into the structure, an important step that only takes about five minutes. So we actually have a dissected cooler here and we're looking at the inside. I don't know why this is not what I was expecting. Tell me a little bit about the foam here. Yeah, we cut it up just for you just to show it, but <laughs> Thank you so much. it's important that the polyethylene shell here bonds with the polyethylene foam, okay. right? It's a closed cell foam system. It gives it some structural strength. Right, I can't support. push that down. Yeah, so that that's what allows you to stand on top of the coolers if you want or really take a beating when yeah. it falls down a mountain. Hopefully it doesn't do that, but sometimes it happens. Right. So. Yeah, this is a lot more solid. Touching it right here, it's a lot more solid than I thought it was going yeah, to be. Yeah, that closed cell system rather than like an open cell system is what gives it that strength right. for sure. So yeah. cool. Yeah, so once the foam is set and the product or the part is kind of set in stone for the most part, the, the polyethylene is bonded with the foam, then it moves into the assembly phase. And that's where the product really starts to come together and look like a cooler. So you're assembling the, uh, the feet, the gaskets to the lid, uh, the hinge pins, different things, and then the, the lid is actually fixed to the base of the cooler. That's where it really starts to look and take shape as the product itself. Maluna is known for their patented unhinged design. So instead of this being a plastic hinge, 
it's strapped down, allowing this top to seal perfectly to the bottom. A good seal means this thing's staying cold or hot for a really long time. Once it's assembled, uh, it's, it's cleaned and shined. Then it moves on into the warehousing side of things. It's stored with product that are um, ready and waiting to be shipped out to its customers. It's a lot of coolers. It is, it's a lot. In fact, it's all of them. Um, <laughs> so this is where we store all of the, uh, the Maluna coolers once they're finished up from the assembly side. Um, and these things go everywhere. Like I said, for the most part, we're shipping to the lower 48, but uh, we've got dealers down south in Florida, uh, to Minnesota, out west in Wyoming. Uh, we gotta make our way east yet, but we're working on it. So. <laughs> right on, so, I mean, they're made in the USA, but these things are going all over the world. While Garrett and Connor pride themselves in being the best in the business, what makes them proudest is enabling customers to enjoy their passions. It's the highest performing cooler, right? So what you're gonna get out of it is more time in the upland field, more time in the boat, more time in the woods. It's just, it's gonna allow you to go further and uh, live out your passions longer. Made for the Outdoors is brought to you by Crane Belt Premium Beer, Finishing Trades Institute of the Upper Midwest, Horn Dog Maps, and by Ace Solid Waste. All the snow and cold. After five months of this crap, it's enough to make people lose their sense of humor. It's fun. <laughs> but not on the watch of these two. With the humor on the packaging, I feel like it's a little bag of fun. We, we make people happy. No bullshit. Just crapola. How it all started was with a joke. We came up with the brand name just at a party having fun with friends. I said, wouldn't it be funny if you made cranberry apple granola and called it crapola? Sometimes one too many beers changes lives. Yeah, that's what got us into all this mess. When we got the trademark, we had to use it or lose it in six months' time. One of those crapola or get off the pot moments. He's had, I don't know how many ideas over the years of crazy things we should do. Honey, maple syrup, and safflower oil. It's got to get to uh, my secret temperature before I can dump it in with the oats. Brian Strom now works him back, baking up batches of granola while Andrea Strom Coffee. leads up front a bakery, coffee stop, and food processing business, so uniquely this. We have customers call from all over the country who just either have a connection to Ely or found our granola some crazy way. The granola recipes start with raw product. Gluten-free organic oats. We used to have a little bowl and we'd mix each batch by hand, you know? And then uh, the bowl got bigger and muscles got bigger and finally got to be too much. Now we make 200 pounds at a time. Here's almonds. All of these recipes. They're written down, you know, but they're here too. So. And all of these ingredients, so important. There's a nice looking box of pecans. Look at those beauties. I don't know, it's just kind of become his passion. He feels really good knowing he is sourcing quality ingredients. We have relationships with some of our farmers. These are a grower direct from our friends in Oklahoma. Sourcing ingredients that I feel good about for my kids, but that I want to feed other people too. Mm -hmm. Boy, it's hard to do this without music. Small downfall of having a TV camera along. I just look for uh, shell fragments here, so you don't want any broken teeth. And gets the approval. All right, sunflower seeds. We do a couple, maybe three of these. Sesame seeds are next. Organic sesame seeds from whole grain milling in Welcome, Minnesota. So this is ground millet and flax that goes in here. 
A lot of goodness going in there. Organic puffed rice. And that is it. Time to roll. There's a green button. Here it goes. Yeah, just want it all uniform. And you can kind of see how it behaves differently when it's mixed thoroughly versus how it mixes now. Let's take a break while this batch mixes up. Dishes. How cute. Dish room is that way. <laughs> I'll be back, sir. I go to work. I'm just over here scrubbing. As The Rock said, know your role. Up next, instead of pushing down, you just kind of rake it. Yep. My slick handiwork almost blows the batch. You're going to be having an outlet sale on a batch soon. <laughs> Made for the Outdoors is brought to you by Magnum Research, Central Boiler, Hunt Worth, and by Guy Metals. Sloppy spring life rolls along outside Ely's downtown storefronts. Does indoors, too. That's what we like. Brian Strom keeps a close eye on his batch of crapola. Granola mixed and now ready for a little TLC. Yeah. All right, so I'm just going to be uh... Scooping granola out, every pan has to have just the right amount and it all has to be spread the same. Uh, uniformity is what helps it all bake. Good granola takes a very soft touch. Like They're one size fits most. Wait, it's got five fingers. There we go. All right, so you would stand here, are you ready? Sure. And then you'd scoop out there. Scoop. 5.9. Pounds. Shh, don't give away your secrets. Really? There you go. Close enough? Yep. So now you're just spreading? Yep. Instead of pushing down, you just kind of rake it. Yep. And you move it into the corner. You're gonna be having an outlet sale on a batch soon. <laughs> <laughs> Brian gently fixes my work and we fill the cart. Into the oven. Now he grabs a hammer. You gotta give it the old fonds. A timer helps Brian remember to turn for perfect pans. <laughs> well, most of the time. This one's coming out. That's the one you did. <laughs> ha ha, funny. It's coming out on the rack, and then the next one's going in. The product comes out to cool, and now production's final dance. Mix in some fruit and get it ready for packaging. Just putting a best buy date here on the boxes. There's a machine that does this too. Yep, his name is Brian. Oh, but not before Andrea takes a dump. Hey, crapola Joe, not mine. So this is the uh, packaging of our granola, where it weighs out 12 ounce bags for us. And then we press the button and it fills them. So it's a handy piece of equipment. Whatever we drop on the floor goes to the chickens. This equipment over here heat seals the bag for us and then puts the date stamp on the back. And then from there, it goes into boxes. Ready to go out the door to Hungry Souls, all the people who support this brand. And that, you should know, 
means more to the Stroms than anything. When we moved our bakery to the previous place, we did a Kickstarter campaign because uh, we didn't have enough money to make the move on our own. And, and people um, helped fund our move. It's, uh, it's amazing. <laughs> wow. I can't speak to the greatness of other communities, you know, this one's special. So now maybe the crapola granola story makes sense. A product of passion, born by people. We were hoping more handsome customers would come in while the camera's working. With a serious sense of humor. It's kind of like a little fun factory, you know. We just took a little chance at the farmer's market and the rest is history.